So I wanted to make a video about the projectile intercept problem for game development because I had tried to do it myself and I actually didn't see that many videos or concise articles on exactly how to do it. I did find a few of them, but I think they were a little hard to follow. So I wanted to make something that was just clean and simple and easy to understand if you have already at least, you know, a basic understanding of some kinematics and algebra. I wrote a companion article to this on Medium and I will pretty much be reading straight off of that. So the problem is pretty straightforward. Whenever you have an AI shooting at something, the AI is not good at leading the shot. You know, if something's moving, you know you have to shoot ahead of it to hit it. So the problem you have is that enemies will always shoot at where you were. So if you're moving at all, like in this case, then it's going to constantly lag behind you. But if the enemy themselves is moving, and they don't take into account the momentum they're imparting into the bullet, they're also going to miss by shooting too far ahead. So the goal is basically to find the direction that a shooter has to shoot at a relatively moving target. So first off, you want to ignore gravity and assume constant velocities. This will work in 2D or 3D because by the end of it, you'll be using dot products, which scale with the dimensions of your vectors. So one thing that you're definitely going to want to do is you're going to set all positions and velocities relative to the shooter. So if both the AI and the target are moving, you're going to want to subtract the AI's position and speed from the target so you can find out what it would be like if they were at rest. And then you're going to have to add that back in afterwards. The variables that you're going to have at the beginning are the shooter's position, the bullet speed, the target position, and the target velocity. The unknowns are going to be time, and the thing that we ultimately want to know, which direction to shoot the bullet in. So you're going to use some basic kinematics at first. The final position of an object is equal to its initial position plus velocity times time. For the bullet, it's going to start at the shooter. It's going to have a speed times a direction times time. Now the speed and the direction combined make velocity, but because we only know one part of it, that's why we're splitting them up here. But for the target, since we know the velocity, we can just use target's velocity. So of course, if we intuit that they meet at their final position, you can set these two equations equal to each other. And since the bullet starts at the shooter's position of zero, since we're doing this all relative from the shooter, you can just cancel out the shooter's position. Now, the second equation was the harder one for me to intuit because I kept thinking, what else do we know about the situation that isn't already expressed in these first equations? If we derive anything from just these equations, it's gonna be redundant, except if you think about it, if you don't know the direction that the bullet is being shot, but you know the speed of it and you are going to find time, then you know, well, after a certain amount of time, the possible positions are going to be in a circle around the shooter and the target is traveling in a straight line. So if you know that, then you know that at some point, the circle of possibilities for that bullet is gonna intersect with the straight line path of the target. And that's what's illustrated here in this graph made using Desmos. You can see that as time passes by, the target and the bullet's possible positions overlap. And those are basically the positions that we are trying to solve for. So we know that the bullet travels a certain distance in a, in a circular path of possibility around the shooter. But what else do we need to equate this to to give us something useful? So it sounds redundant, but we know that the distance between the bullet's final position and its starting position is equal to the distance it traveled. But since from the first equation, we can equate the final position of the bullet with the final position of the target, now we have something else to use. Basically, we know that the distance between the target's final position and the bullet's initial position is equal to the distance that the bullet travels without needing to know the direction. And we can solve this using the Euclidean distance formula, which is an extension of the Pythagorean theorem. So using the target's final position and the origin, which is where the shooter is, we can set these distance equations equal to each other and solve for time. And you'll notice that to do this with the original equation, we have to split the target's final position into its dimensions. First, the distance between the target's final position and the shooter's initial position is equal to the target's final x position minus the shooter's initial x position, and so on. And since the shooter's zero, we're gonna cancel those out, and then you square both sides, and we're here. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. Since the, we know that the final position is equal to the initial position plus velocity times time, right? So you can split this 
into its dimensions as well. So you're gonna replace these dimensions with their equivalent kinematic formulas, position plus velocity times time. And so you're gonna expand all this out and then you're gonna solve it for time. And now you're gonna have a quadratic equation. You get these as the quadratic coefficients. They look a little complicated, but they get a lot simpler once you turn them into the dot products. So what you might not notice is that these are the dot products of the original vectors that we had at the beginning. So the dot product is when you multiply the dimensions of vectors together and sum them. So what that means is you multiply the x times the x and the y times the y or the z times the z and you add it all together. And so it works no matter how many dimensions for a vector you have. But generally, of course, in game development, you only have two or three. So that's why it'll work in 2D or 3D, because when you call the dot product in your game engine, it's just a function. It'll do it the same no matter what you give it. So if we replace these original variables with their equivalent dot products, we have something that's going to be pretty simple for you to implement in your game engine. So now that you've got that, you're going to do the classic negative b plus or minus a square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, and you're going to wind up with some solutions. Now, if you remember, quadratic equations don't always have solutions. They might have 0, 1, or 2, because sometimes, you know, if the target is already traveling too fast and the bullet can't catch up, well, then it'll never hit it. Or it might only have one chance to hit it. Or it might have two because the path crosses over two points in the bullet's possible positions. And once you have time, you're gonna be able to substitute it back into our original equations and solve for that unit vector. You're gonna have to remember to add the velocity of the shooter back to the bullet to make it all work correctly. And after that, your AI should be able to shoot at you and hit you no matter how fast you or they are moving. So, cheers.